Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Scuba Science, where we try and demystify all the concepts involved in scuba diving. Today we're going to learn about the gases of scuba diving. This program is for now completely self-funded. So if you want to support Scuba Science, you can always pick up some Dive Saga merch. I will put a link below. And of course, you can also consider picking up my book, Career in Scuba, which is for budding dive professionals. Scuba diving relies heavily on the specific breathing gas that a diver is using. These gases can either be readily available, such as air and to an extent nitrox, or are tailor-made for highly specific technical dives. These gases are often used to overcome certain psychological or physiological challenges that the diver faces at specific depths. But what are the specific gases that divers could use? Compressed air, air, is generally the most used scuba diving gas. Every recreational scuba diver starts their training using air. Funnily enough, non-divers often refer to what's in our cylinders as oxygen, but air, which we find in the atmosphere, typically only contains 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and a percent of residual different gases, mostly argon. And obviously compressed air is very easy to produce because it is already available in the atmosphere. We just have to compress it and store it in scuba cylinders, which makes it a practical choice for most scuba diving operations in a recreational setting. Air is suitable for diving up to 50-60 meters, depending on which training agency you go by, as long as the diver adheres to no decompression limits. But air does have its limitations. For instance, gas narcosis. At a certain depth, typically beyond 30 meters, 100 feet, regular air becomes a bit narcotic. Divers can get a sense of euphoria, a false sense of security, and can make bad decisions. Some people liken this to being drunk, but underwater. There is also oxygen toxicity. This is not so much because of air, but oxygen specifically does become toxic under pressure. Specifically under a partial pressure of 1.6 bar, oxygen tends to become toxic for most human beings. Since air contains 21% oxygen, that means that roughly beyond 55-60 meters, divers will stop using air as a diving gas to eliminate the risk of oxygen toxicity. Oxygen toxicity can lead to convulsions, which would cause a diver to spit out their regulator, inhale water and drown. So for these reasons, air does have a cutoff at around 50 to 60 meters, depending on who you ask. And then there is of course decompression sickness, as we already discussed in our episode about the dangers of scuba diving. Air contains nitrogen and nitrogen is an inert gas, meaning our body does not metabolize it like it does with oxygen. The nitrogen simply enters our tissues and sits there until we ascend and the nitrogen escapes again. Having too much of this by diving too long or too deep can cause serious decompression sickness. There are ways to prevent this by using gases other than air. Enriched air, or nitrox, is essentially air that's been enriched with more oxygen. So we elevate the oxygen content and thus reducing the nitrogen content. Since nitrogen is the inert gas that does not get metabolized, having less of it in the breathing gas makes us able to stay down longer while still having no decompression limits. For example, a 30 meters or 100 foot dive on air typically has a no decompression limit of about 20 minutes. The same dive on 32% nitrox will have a no decompression limit of almost 30 minutes, which is 50% more. Common blends include 32% or 36% nitrox, and you are very likely to encounter these at your average dive shop, but any percentage of gas can be made. One of the drawbacks of nitrox though is that of course it has a depth limit because oxygen does become toxic at a partial pressure of 1.4 to 1.6 depending on which agency you dive with. Uh, this does mean that we have to limit our depth because a higher oxygen percentage means we reach that partial pressure sooner. 
So for instance, while air can safely be used down to depths of 50 meters plus, Nitrox 32 is going to have a maximum depth limit of around 33 meters, 110 feet. Remember that exceeding the partial pressure can trigger oxygen toxicity, causing the diver to convulse and drown. So while nitrox yields longer bottom times, it is more restrictive on the dive depth. Another drawback is that the diver does need specific training to use nitrox. This is typically not a very complicated or overly long course, but it is extremely unsafe to use nitrox without being trained for it specifically. Helium is a critical component in breathing gas mixes that are used for technical diving, which often involves going beyond depths that recreational divers would go to. As opposed to nitrogen, helium is non-narcotic, which makes it an ideal gas to put into the mix when we have specific tasks that require dedicated attention underwater. Trimix is a blend of oxygen, nitrogen and helium. Try, three, mix, mix. And Trimix will often be the go-to gas for technical divers venturing beyond the 50 meter 165 feet limit. There are different reasons to use Trimix. See, helium is also a much lighter gas, which means the work of breathing that is required to simply breathe is much lower. So dives that require more effort might also become a little bit easier and prevent the diver from becoming overexerted by putting helium in the mix. Because helium is also not narcotic, you can also focus better and reducing the nitrogen levels also alters the decompression schedule, although not necessarily in an advantageous way. When it comes to trimix, there are essentially two categories. There is normoxic trimix and hypoxic trimix. Normoxic trimix is a trimix blend that will still have an oxygen percentage in the mix that is breathable at the surface. Strictly speaking, this is 21% oxygen, although a mix down to 18% oxygen would still sustain consciousness on the surface if aspired, let's say, on the boat or while getting ready in the water. Hypoxic trimix, on the other hand, reduces the oxygen content in the trimix, below 21% and even below 18%. This is again to eliminate the risk of oxygen toxicity at greater depths. The less oxygen in the gas, the deeper we can go before we reach a critical partial pressure of oxygen that would trigger oxygen toxicity. The drawback of hypoxic trimix is of course that it's not breathable at the surface. So the diver now needs a travel gas to get down to depth before they can switch to their hypoxic trimix. If the diver were to breathe a hypoxic mix on the surface, they will very likely pass out within minutes. Trimix does enable us to dive at deeper depths in a safer way and it does eliminate the narcotic feeling that nitrogen causes. This allows for better cognitive function during complex dives and reduces the work of breathing. But Trimix is not without its challenges, because helium is a very expensive gas, especially on open circuit scuba where every breath is inhaled and then exhaled out into the atmosphere, this is a very costly endeavor. There is also the issue of high pressure nervous syndrome. Beyond 150 meters, 500 feet, helium can also cause tremors, which is not ideal when trying to perform a complex dive. And lastly, and this is probably obvious, trimix diving requires highly specific training and should absolutely not be attempted without that training. There is a video right here on the Dive Saga channel about a 120 meter, 400 foot trimix dive that I did, which you can watch. And we do discuss also the severe limitations and almost why diving on trimix to such depths on open circuit is a little bit ridiculous. Heliox is another helium-based gas, but it is no longer a tri-mix. There are no longer three gases in the mix. Heliox is simply a combination of helium and oxygen, doing away with the nitrogen altogether. This gas is often used for depths up to 300 meters, 900 feet in commercial settings. It removes dealing with nitrogen altogether, but is a highly specific gas to work with. 
Helium is not a good insulator compared to nitrogen and so using a purely heliox mix typically means the diver will get colder faster, at least from the gases that they are breathing. Furthermore, remember that the helium part is the expensive part, not the nitrogen. So heliox is even more expensive than trimix. Hydrogen mixes are something experimental and extremely advanced. Recreational or even recreational technical divers are not likely to dive with hydrogen mixes. Hydrox, as the name suggests, is a mix of hydrogen and oxygen. This is used in commercial settings, but even so rarely, because it is a flammable combination of gases, but functions well down to depths of 900 feet, 300 meters. Extreme precautions are necessary when using hydrox, because the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen makes that at a percentage of more than four to 5% oxygen, this gas becomes explosive if ignited. Hydreliox is hydrogen, helium and oxygen, once again in a highly experimental setting, but because hydrogen is still somewhat narcotic, adding helium back into the mix and having a mixture of hydrogen, helium and oxygen can reduce some of those narcotic effects and allow people to dive deeper than 500 meters or 1640 feet. Most of us are not likely to ever come into contact with any of those hydrogen-based diving gases just yet. Although not different gases, it is worth mentioning that there are different decompression gases that are used in technical diving. For instance, pure oxygen can be used at very shallow depths to wash out the inert gas out of our system, but can absolutely not be dived deeper than about 6 meters 20 feet at the risk of severe oxygen toxicity. And lastly, there is an honorable mention for argon, which is not a breathing gas, but is a gas that divers may encounter as it is commonly used as a dry suit inflation gas. Argon has a lower thermal conductivity than air and most certainly than helium, which makes it a prime gas to put into your dry suit, but it cannot be breathed and should not be used for breathing purposes. But I include it in this list because it is a gas that might be encountered in a scuba diving setting. In conclusion, the choice of breathing gases is one of the more critical factors when it comes to diving, especially when we dive a little deeper or in more complex situations. Most recreational divers will start out with air and maybe quickly progress into nitrox, but that is about it for most of our diving careers. Nevertheless, it never hurts to understand the characteristics of all these different gases. It is of course possible that more developments will be made in the future, especially in the field of hydrogen-based diving gases. And that is one of the fascinating elements of scuba science. 